Nah, yeah, you, you've had enough about of this. Yeah. More oh. music. Hello. <laughs> Hello to you. Hello. Uh, that's what. That's what she said. I, Mr. Mark Goldberg, thank you for joining us. I, I typically say, oh, hello, who are you? Da, 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 da. But for those that are watching on LinkedIn versus those that are listening uh, through their AirPods or through their, their cars, we have the distinguished honor of having Mr. Mark Goldberg, also known as the LinkedIn famous pay it forward professional. I guess. Yeah, sure. I sincerely mean that. I, I Mark, you have... Through mutual networks, I have seen your posts over the past several years, and you constantly are trying. You're just a mensch. You do the right thing. You pay it forward, and you are constantly helping other people. And that's one of the reasons why I reached out to you initially and how we are developing a budding friendship is purely just paying it forward and just being a good person. So, Mark Goldberg, the floor is yours. Thank Who you, are sir. you? Uh, my name is Mark Goldberg. Uh, I run a consultancy now at Stages Collective. I've been on the agency side. I've been a publisher. I've been on the ad tech side. I've been in this industry for quite some time. You can see I used to have hair. I don't have it anymore. I'm old. I am the pay it forward guy. If you want to call me that, I've been doing pay it forward in the organic sense of always, hey, can you talk to my buddy? And now there's this platform called LinkedIn. Hopefully you've been on it. Um, it's a really good platform and I've been able to really connect a lot of people. I think it's just a good thing to do. Um, all my network calls me. I can't answer all their calls. This is a good way one to many. So, uh, it's been working. Uh, I've been helping getting a lot of people roles. My consultancy also does contingent recruitment. So I'm also doing a little bit of recruitment as well. So it's been great and uh, I've enjoyed it. And I, I, I like what your, your mission is. Thank you, Mark. I, I appreciate that. You're also, uh, your, your father, your husband, you live in, in New Jersey. You grew up in the Chicagoland area. Justin Fields, sorry. Let's, we'll get through it. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, what, what, what defines you just as an executive, as a professional, as someone who just exudes empathy? Oh, that's, so, you know, in the early stage of my career, um, I always would try to understand everything in the world. And then once I started to understand it, I used to teach you know, the media class at Zenith Media back in the day. I used to really, you know, be, be the new hire orientation person at about.com. I used to really try to continue to give back. And I joined 500 startups, ERA, uh, Techstars, all the accelerator programs, because I liked and enjoyed being a mentor. I've done the a a mentorship uh, as well. Um, I just like that. That's who I am. I like to coach. Uh, you know, I coach all my kids in various sports. That's, I would say, I always just like to be involved and help out. That's amazing. Uh, being involved and just having a helping hand is important. It, it really just, it, it, it makes and, a difference. But, but also if you can show a meaningful, you know, path. So, so with the accelerator program, I got to work with some startups that they were smarter than I was in a lot of ways, how they thought about the business problem, but to execute on the problem, they were missing some things and that's where I could help. And so just mentorship in job career stuff, people think they're great. And sometimes you have to tell them they're not. And here's how they have to fix themselves. And that both of those, you can show them growth paths. And I think that's just been something that's important to me is to help people grow. Uh, so that's basically my next question. I was going to ask, essentially, how would you characterize your skill set? And I would think that you organically would characterize it by helping people grow. Am I right? How would you play off of that? I, I think that's probably at the end of the day, my stages consultancy, basically stages collective, I help people get to the next stage and getting to the next stage requires some growth. And so if I can help them grow as a business, like I have clients that are coming in from the UK trying to understand the US marketplace, if they understand the US marketplace and can grow here, their business takes off. I have some startups that I'm helping here in the US that as they continue to grow, they, they're getting bigger and more, you know, getting stronger. What do I do? I help them grow. And so I, I think there's a lot to say about growth. I, I don't like to be called a growth hacker because that's absolutely not what I do. Yeah. But that word growth does matter in so many different capacities of business. With that growth, does that help you feel that sense of paying it forward? Does that help you feel that that sense of just altruism through mentorship as well? Yeah, I mean, pay paying it forward started because I just literally didn't have enough time in the day to help people. 
Um, but also paying it forward meant, you know what, something's going to come back to me. And, 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 and in the truest sense, right, it comes back. And I think I've created a nice flywheel of helping people. And they remember that. And like, you know, I'll be at a conference and hopefully on Tuesday I'll go. Someone would tap me on the shoulder and say, here's a beer. Thank you for helping me get my next role. I found it via LinkedIn. The amount of good emails I get, and, and, and I'm pointing to my screen that no one can see right there, um, on, on, LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, I get an inbox full of like people being very – uh, thankful for some of the stuff I've done. And I, I, I truly appreciate that. That's part of it. Like, I just like that. That's amazing. What, when, when you look back, what would you tell your younger self, whether it's your 25 year, year old self, your 30 year old self, we talked about this earlier when we're going back and forth, when you think back at your younger self, for those that are watching, those that are viewing, what are some things, some tips and tricks that if you could hit the rewind button outside of scratching your head from one, uh, balding guy to another? Well, going back 25 years is a long effing time. I mean, just keep in mind, we didn't have email back then. So uh, I don't know if it would be so much as, hey, dumbass, study more and pay attention in English class, because I think communication is, is critical in a lot of ways. And English is often taken for granted. Um, as a class, people don't read and write. And I think those skills are super important for whatever you do in life, um, because now we're dependent on these little devices called phones where we have to write emails to our bosses and things. So English is a great thing to do. And I would have probably doubled down a little bit more. But I think I did a lot of the right things of trying to actually be a good person, um, because I think, you know, everyone remembers that reputation. As a media buyer, we had people who were taking, you know, uh, trips and doing stuff for one sales rep and they're trying to get money out. Like yep. there, there were a lot of bad activities back in the day. And I just said I wasn't going to be a bad person. I didn't want to take an incentive trip because I wasn't doing my day job. And so if you always try to do the right thing, I think everything, everyone sees that. And your reputation is something that's going to precede you and could hinder you from getting your next job and growing in, your, in any role. Were there different mentors that helped teach you this along the way? Like who were some uh, of your professional mentors? Yeah. I mean, this is going to be on LinkedIn, so I'm going to leave people off and they're going to be pissed. So thanks. Um, but you but, can also time out with that. So you can email me, you can text me right after. And I'm just saying there, there's been a laundry list. list. So there's been a lot of great people in my life and I've been fortunate to be close to a lot of people uh, at the senior level and just been taking the ride, taking, help them uh, let me take the ride with them. So, you know, if I go all the way back, it's Liz Fox, who's now, a, you know, very senior at Zenith Media. She taught me to be tough, but fair as a media buyer. And I really thought that was interesting because you have to do your job, but just don't be a jerk. And I thought that was very interesting on the buy side. There's a couple other great people that I learned and met in phase two media at about.com. I could I have countless of people who've been excellent to me, but one of them was Ron McCoy, who was the CTO. And he really opened my eyes to understanding how different groups work together at a company. And, you know, a, a, a salesperson keeps on doing the same thing, going, calling and making a sale and failing and, and then going again and doing it again. A product person and a, and a tech person says, shit, it's on my freaking my desk, I have to figure out when I'm going to get it done. And it's imminent because it has to get done. And so there's just two different ways, uh, different teams, those two teams speak to each other. And he starts to kind of, he helped me kind of think bigger in organizations, which then helped me think bigger in companies. And so I would give him a lot of credit as well. Amazing. Amazing. Any, what about on, in the, in your personal world outside of work, anyone else that has had a, a profound impact? Profound impact in the personal world. Wow. I'd have to think about that longer. I mean, I would have to say mom and dad were very important. Yep. You know, my dad and stepmother are both, you know, now retired law professors from Columbia and NYU, respectively. They were very smart. They uh, they knew a lot of things about a lot of people in terms of just, you know, the law and and helping me kind of see that kind of the world, which made me very aware of that type of world, which is why I'm not a lawyer. So, you know. You know, I learned a lot from them uh, indirectly and directly. And I would say if I had to do a shortcut, easy answer, that those two, and as well as my mom, who's been, you know, the, the mayor of Central Street in Evanston forever. So, you know, that, that's great kinda, street. Yeah, it is a great street. It's so great those, street. You know, the, 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 those, those three would be put in the category. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. As you know, as a, as a hello, as a mentor on the platform, 
we care about altruism. We care about being able to give back. And the fact that we are integrated in approximately 50 different non-for-profits where after each Oh Hello mentorship session, you can have the choice to, to give back to any of those any of those charities. What's a cause that's near and dear to your heart, Mark? So or a cause is plural. I say again? Or a cause is plural. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of causes I would say that are important. Um, but generally I uh, and I'm going to be very honest, I generally don't give to a lot of charities because I'd rather do the work. And, you know, I put, I, I do a lot of the stuff that, you know, I mean, I'm not going to start telling you everything I do in life, but, you yeah, know, little, little things like, you know, helping with the Glen Rock um, parade, 4th of July parade. I'm very deeply involved in putting a parade together. That's not a charity per se, but that's just giving back. And I think there's something about giving back to those types of things and causes that kind of puts you in that kind of giving kind of give back uh, ecosystem. Um, I would say breastcancer.org is a very important one. And if I had to choose, that's probably where I would give it uh, a variety of reasons in that under that domain. But um, I think, think that's a very good cause. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. And, and it, when you talk about uh, time versus money, I, I think a lot of us understand that uh, those are two perpendicular aspects that also can run parallel when it comes to just some people have time, others have money and just whatever essentially is making you feel that you're able to pay it forward to bring it back to what you do best. So thank you for sharing that. As we conclude this Oh Hello session, why did, it just what? I know what I want to ask you about specifically parting words of wisdom that you have for our Oh Hello tribe, for those that are watching, for your network, for my network, for our collective networks. What, if, if Mark Goldberg, the pay it forward executive could say or do one thing, what would that one thing be? Throwing you a curveball, my friend. If I could do one thing for who? I mean, I'm, let me just make sure I understand the question. Your parting words of wisdom, if this was going to be on your tombstone, so to speak, or if, if this was your uh, biography, instead of having that's what she said, if okay. you had a shirt that said XYZ Mark Goldberg. So, so uh, one of my other mentors, uh, a person in that about mix was Mark Westlake. He all, always used to say, do what you're supposed to be doing while you're supposed to be doing it. Have fun. And I think, you know, that just talks about like, hey, you have a day job, you're going to be working, you better do what you said you're, you, you've got to do and you got to be successful at that. But also try to make sure you're doing something that you like and enjoy. And I think we all would love to work at a place that we would all love and enjoy. It doesn't always end that way in terms right. of, oh, man, I like football. I work for the NFL. No, it does, it's different. But like there are cultures and companies that do make you uh, have fun, even if you're selling, you know, widgets. So, you know, enjoy what you're doing um, and try to find that. And, and not everything is a, a, a job. There are careers and you have to differentiate those two because you could just take a job and just continue to do this. But if you find a career, you can grow in that career. And then hopefully in that career, you're in, in enjoying what you're doing and while you're doing it. I think I answered that. That was, that was a fantastic answer. Mark yeah. Goldberg, ah, this has been great. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you for hopping on the O oh, mic dropped. Thank you for hopping on the Oh Hello podcast. You're going to go pick it up. You're going to pick it up. He's picking it up. He's picking it up. Thank you, everyone, for listening and for watching. Mark, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Go to ohello.io.